The purpose of today's class is to explore the personal relationship that Jesus desires uh, to have with us and to use that relationship as a model for our, our own personal relationships. Jesus, in his time on this, this life, as it, on his life on this earth, as he, as he traveled around and he, he, and he taught, he didn't surround himself with, with those that, 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 is, that to teach. He didn't uh, surround himself with uh, great businessmen or anything like that. What he surrounded himself with were his friends. This, this section is one, one of my favorite sections in the Bible. I mean, I, I appreciate the whole Bible, and, and I like the whole Bible, but out of this, this, this session talks to me. When I was a young man, it, it was difficult for me to make friends. I didn't have a whole lot of friends. Ray, on the other hand, could make friends with a, uh, a fence post. You know? <laughs> but, you know, it, it was difficult for me to, to, to form that relationship. You know, so this, this particular section, uh, uh, it speaks to me because, you know, I like the idea of having Jesus as my friend. And I think that that's what Jesus wants us to be. Uh, go ahead and open up to where we're at in 15, and we'll begin reading uh, from verse 12, where we left off. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down his one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all these things that I have that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, I, he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. What are some of the most important qualities in a friend? What do you look for in a friend? What are some of the most important qualities to have as a friend? You're being a friend. What are the qualities that you should have? Loyalty. Loyal. To be loyal. Trustworthy. Trustworthy. To be trustworthy. You should be able to trust your friends. To be a good listener. To be a good listener. You know, uh, we, we all have problems, and uh, sometimes in our problems, we need someone to talk to. And who, who, who do we, who's better to talk to than your friend? Because your friend, he, he understands you, or should understand you, and you should understand your friends, and he should know the things that you face. These are all important qualities of a friend. And I think uh, trustworthy and loyalty are probably the, the most important qualities of a friend. Uh, thought for personal, I mean, uh, for personal reflection. Who is your closest friend? Take some time to pray for this person as you begin this study. I know we all have uh, uh, some friends that are, are closer to us than other friends. You know, Jesus Jesus was closer to some of his apostles than he was to other apostles. He was close to John, he was close to Peter, and, you know, he, those are the ones he kept around him. You know, so, I mean, uh, uh, in this class, you know, at this time, you know, take time to, to pray for your closest friend, especially if your closest friend isn't a member of the body. So, in, in for, for discussion, I mean, our first question in the reading is, Jesus already told his disciples to love each other. How does this instruction in verse 12 raise the standard of our love? It raises the standard to his love. It raises the standard to his love. He says, love, love, me, love as I have loved you. You know? And he also sits there and says, no greater love that a man has for his friend is than to, to die for his friend or to lay down his life for his friend. Uh, I don't, I don't know if I have 
have a, know a lot of people that I might be willing to lay down my life for them. Uh, maybe I do. Maybe I won't know until I put in that situation. You know, uh, and, and most of us, you know, really don't know that for sure until we're put into that situation. But, you know, the, the interesting thing about Jesus was Jesus knew he was going to lay down his life for his friends, and he's talking to them. In fact, he's going to talk to them about that later here in the chapter as we go along. Uh, Mike, when you enlisted, you laid down your life for another country. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. That's that's a that that is an interesting thought, and I've often I've often spoke about that. Uh, when, when we did the Lord's Supper, I would mention that, you know, Jesus says, you know, uh, to lay down your life for a friend, and uh, over in Romans, he says, there are some who may be willing to even lay down their lives. Uh, but, you know, and, and I speak on that, you know, willing to lay down your life and being prepared to lay down your life, but probably not... I, it's, it's hard to explain until you put it in there. Like I said, people join the military and they're willing to lay down their lives for their country. They're willing to lay down their lives for their friend, but, you know, they'd rather not. You know, so in, in a situation, you know, if, if you follow what my thought is, uh, yeah. I think I, I understand the, the idea of that. You know, it's one thing to... Uh, to take a risk, to know that there's risk involved and take the chance, you know. And it's another thing to, if you knew the outcome, if you were told, hey, you're going to walk through that door and get killed for all these people out here. Yeah. That's a little different than yeah. there's a chance that it could happen. You know, Knowing that it will happen and you still willingly do it, that's, that's a little different. Fire, firemen and policemen, especially I, I like to use the example of a fireman. When a fireman enters a burning building, he knows he's put his life at risk. But, you know, he, he'd much rather not have that burning floor land on his head, but he knows that risk is there. Uh, Marilyn. <laughs> I knew you forgot my name. Um, when we were going through that time when we had to to go through those classes for, um, for, um, active shooter. Active shooter, thank you. Um, these guys were, you know, willing to be out there yeah. in case somebody came in with a gun to shoot. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, there's the willingness and there's the, you know, you know, and, like I said, with Jesus, he was willing, and he, you know, we don't often think about this, but Jesus did not have to go to the cross if he did not want to. You know, but he did. And uh, you, can't, you can't say that Jesus did not know the outcome of him going to the cross. He knew that that was going to be the end of his life here on this earth at that particular moment. And it was a painful end, too. That's another thing. You know, are you willing to suffer here in, in your dying? You know, because a lot of situations, you know, like again, uh, Marines always use the example of, of your, your fire team person throwing himself on a grenade. He knows that that's going to probably be the end of his life. But I'll tell you right now, there's probably not a whole lot of pain in that. Uh, because it's, unless you're truly unfortunate and it's not immediate death. You know, then there will be a lot of pain. In fact, there will be more pain in your not dying in that situation. What are the requirements and benefits of friendship with Jesus? What are Jesus? What What is the requirement of a friend with Jesus? Obey his commands. O obey his commands. He sits there and he says, you are my friends if you do the things that I tell you or have commanded you. You must, you know, follow, do, do what he says. Uh, what are the benefits? They're non-ending. All kinds of benefits. Yeah, they're, 
they're, they're all in him. You, know, you, get, you have all the benefits, all the spiritual blessings of God. But th th this was the answer I expected. You have heaven. You have your final salvation, that final resting place. You got that if you're a friend with Jesus. Or if you're counted among his friends. Here, here's a one. Is being a friend of Jesus the same as being a believer in Jesus? Explain no. your answer. No. Most people believe, but they don't do anything about it. Even Satan believed in it. Yeah, the demons. <laughs> even even <laughs> the demons believe. And uh, you know, if, if there was anything opposite to being a friend, friend, that would that would be Jesus. So. But the belief is not enough. Okay, well, well, actually, that answered the second part of my question. Sorry, <laughs> it's not what I have up here. It's one, 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 one that I wrote down. Can you believe in Jesus and not be his friend? Then yes, obviously, yes. Uh, the devil, Satan, believed in Jesus. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, for 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 those of us that 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 are are not Satan, can we be? Uh, can can we believe in Jesus and not be his friend? And then the answer to that is, you know, you, you don't you don't necessarily accept him. There are a lot of people out there that believe in Jesus, and they're 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 not saved because they don't want to do what's necessary to do, or they they want they still want to live the way that they want to live. You know, so you don't have, you you have to there's the, there's the accepting you have to accept basically you have to accept Jesus as Lord. Uh, you have to accept him as your savior, and you have to put him on in baptism. Then you have to continue to live for him, and then do the things that he asks you to do. And then uh, Jesus might consider you his friend. And I'm going to say that he will, you know. But uh, yeah. it's, it it kind of revolves back to the you know the uh, um, passage that says faith without works is dead. Yeah. So, so many people think that that means well I. I have to prove my faith by works, but it's the opposite. Mm. Your faith is proven by your actions. Mm -hmm. If you don't change and you don't follow through, then yeah. you know, your, your faith is obviously not there. I think we pick up on reading here at this time. Uh, beginning in verse uh, 18 and reading through to 25. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept, if you, if they kept my word, they will keep your words also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had, had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated me, both me and my father. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in the law. They hated me without cause. And I hope we get a lot of discussion on this, this part here, because I've got some questions here. Uh, why does Jesus switch from talking about love to talk about hate? You know, that was a, a rapid change around. Jesus says, uh, love as I... As I have loved, you know, and then, you know, just, I'm not going to snap my fingers because I can't snap my fingers. But, you know, almost instantaneously, he, he flips the coin and he starts talking about hate. They're going to hate you. Why does Jesus do that? He's letting them know. What He's letting them know that they're going to be hated. You know. There's going to be some tribulations. Yeah, troubles and tribulations are going to follow you. You're going to be hated, you know, uh, and, you know, he didn't want it to come as a surprise to them. 
I think more importantly, when when they do you know after Jesus goes back to heaven after Acts two and all that, and and all of a sudden the disciples, the apostles, are now they're going out and they're teaching, and they have people that you know react unkindly to the teaching. He doesn't, you know, when when that happens, I think they're going to remember what Jesus said. But here's 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 a thought or or or, or thing. Do people want to be hated? No. Do, do people want to be liked? Yes. Would you not much rather be liked than hated? Yes. So, you know, uh, you know, Jesus is given in the warning, you know, and I'm sure that the apostles were the same way. They wanted to be liked. But now they have an understanding that, you know, well, not everybody's going to like them. You know, and we have that, we have that today. Not every, not everybody's <clears throat> going to like you. And sometimes we, sometimes we, uh, this is me, sometimes I, I, I will do things in order to get people to like me. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily uh, good things. You know, because you really want to be liked. Mike, if you want to be liked, get a pickup truck. Everybody likes people with pickup trucks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I've noticed that, Larry. <laughs> that Dale. Well, I think also that they get they get strength. He's strengthening them by telling them what to expect and that hey, this is going to happen. Uh, those who followed me will will follow you, and they're going to like you. And those who didn't, they're they're going to. Uh, you know, not be very friendly with you. Yeah. Knowing what to expect going in, and we used to say embrace the suck, it's going to stink. You're going to have something that's horrible. Expect it and, and deal with it. Embrace the suck. I never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> or never heard it put that way. But yeah, you know, He, uh, he gave the, the part that he's going to love and be with them. He wants to love one another. There's a strength. To do There's a strength. What's going to happen later on? Mm -hmm. And because it comes from him, because he told them that when it happens, it's just going to strengthen their faith. They're going to say, he said this was going to happen. We knew What reasons does Jesus give for the world's hatred? Sin. Yeah. Him. Yeah. 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 So, so. But but Jesus actually he 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 actually says things. You know this is this is why this is why they hate me. This is why they're going to hate you, boy. They're going to hate you because they hated me. But that's that's you know that's just uh, oh, a he result. brought to their attention that he they brought were sinners. But it says that if he hadn't come, then they they wouldn't be sinners. But now they don't have any excuse. Yeah. It's not like they don't know it what they're supposed to be doing. Let's let's look back here and reread it. The sister says, "The world says a little greater is kept, but these things they." These things they will do to you for my name's sake. Okay, they want to do it because of who Jesus is. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin, but they have no excuse for the sin. He who hates me, okay, so so one of the reasons they hate Jesus, he says, is because they hate the Father. Yeah. They hate me because they hate the Father. They, they hate you because they hate me. It goes, it goes on. He who hates me hates the Father. If I had not done among them the works through whom no one else did, they would not have sinned, but now they have their sin, and they also hated both me and my Father. But this happened with the word, that the word might be fulfilled in the law. So this happened because it, it said so in the word. Let's go on to the next question, and maybe this will help further bring it on. Give one or two specific examples of 
how you have experienced in the world's hatred as a, as a Christian, and how did you respond to this hostility? Have you experienced the hatred of the world for being a Christian? My family. Your family? Yeah. Family hates you because you rejected their way of living and so on and so forth. They hate you, their family hates you because you know you might want to tell them about Jesus and so on and so forth. My sister. Your sister. This is a funny story, but it's weird. Um, <clears throat> Her throat was clogged, so Ron went in to help her unclog it, and I went to bed. And um, she, he was witnessing to her, and she hates him. She totally hates him. Plus the fact that he brought me here. I'm not going to say what I'm about to say. Does the church experience hatred or condemn condemnation of, of a world here in the United States today? What's one you know again? What's one way that the church the church here experiences hatred? People coming in with guns. Yeah, people coming in with guns. What, and, and this, this might give you a clue to where I'm going. What is the United States' is stance on homosexuality? Okay. Accept it all. Accept it all. Yeah. Accept it. Yeah. Yeah. Accept it. It's, 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 but uh, it's a way of life. It's, just, it's a natural way of life. Mm -hmm. It's normal. Yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> normal to be to be gay if you were born that way. Okay. But how how does that affect the church? Church says we teach against it. We teach against it. Okay. It's sin. But what what the, is the government trying to tell us on how we should treat them? We should. They're saying we should accept them. Embrace them and bring them into our church and if, love them. And treat them special. I don't know. Uh, <coughs> not if they don't understand. Give them more rights than yeah, but that, yeah. I, I don't know if uh, John here does. Does uh, John have the ability to poor marriages? Yes. Yeah. 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 If a gay couple came into the church here and they talked to John and they said, We want to get married in this church. He would say, he would say, he say no. no. But legally, I think they could try to force John to do it. <clears throat> yeah. That's right. They could. It's in our bylaws. It's in our bylaws, and so we get around. Yes, it. bylaws there. Yeah. And we, we have book, chapter, and verse on it there, and that's what we believe, and yeah. they cannot go against our. Our religious because our religious belief, they can try. Right. I, I don't know. Somewhere I got the impression that they could take away John's uh, avail, uh, uh, legality of being able to perform weddings if if he refused. Right. No, no. Uh, yeah, they I guess I guess you know. Now, if it was a secular, say a uh, justice of the peace. That refused to do it. Yeah, they yes, can, they can remove uh, him from. Okay, maybe, his maybe, maybe that's where I got the impression was uh, 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 because I, I yeah, know, if he's it's been on the news Christian that they, they, they took away a person's right to perform marriage. If he was a Christian in his personal life and he refused to do it, they could do that. Well, you know, even Mike learns something every day. <laughs> Ron, let me get to Ron. Ron's going to get tired holding up his hand. Like all of our bylaws. That we have written are all backed up by scripture. So every bylaw that we've got put in there has a scriptural basis for its functionality. And under the laws at this time, they do allow the Bible to take precedence over what what would be socially accepted. 
I'm, I'm, I'm glad you put that phrase in there at this time. Right now, we're, 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 we're protected by our legal right to, for, to religion and because of our bylaws. Uh, do you foresee a day when it won't be? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was a Christian paper. I, I don't remember how it came out, but a couple came in, a gay couple, and wanted a wedding cake. Wedding cake. Yeah. yeah. And I forget how that came out. Uh, they upheld the, they, uh, from they what I understand, they upheld the uh, cake company. Yeah. The, the Supreme Court did. Yeah. 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 That they could refuse yeah. service. I think uh, a lot of a lot of restaurants out there they have a sign that they put out. We 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 retain the right to refuse service to anybody we want for, for whatever. You know. yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, payment has to be posted hmm. yeah. in order for us to have our rights hmm. when we live in America. You know, uh, on that, uh, uh, it has to be posted. We're legally required to put a sign out there saying that we've got cameras that may be recording you breaking into, uh, into the building. And if we didn't have that sign out there and someone broke into the building and we couldn't use the evidence of the camera because we didn't tell them. <laughs> That's, you know... Uh, you know, I learn these things when I'm on the business committee, the building committee, and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we, we we sit around a lot and shake our heads a lot. What? <laughs> yeah, you also have to post no trespassing. No trespassing. If you did not post no trespassing, well, you didn't tell them they couldn't walk around in their building free and dilly. And it has to be has to have the legal. And uh, you know, and not only does it, it have to be posted, it has to be posted in a prominent space where there's no way they could not see it. You know, if you have it posted out front and they came in the back door, you're you're in trouble. You know John said something, and I think it was Wednesday night, or maybe maybe it was uh Preston in his class yesterday. You know, when it says, you know, the United States is, a, is such a great nation and they're blessed in many ways. And, and sometimes, you know, he sits there and says, are, are we really blessed? Yeah. Interesting yeah. thought. What does Jesus, okay, this is one I like. And this, this, this particular verse here has caused me confusion in the past, but I think... I think now I have come to an understanding of it. it says, what does Jesus mean when he says that without his coming, his words, and his miracles, the world would not be guilty of sin? Well, Don't just throw out scripture unless, you, unless you're willing to back it up with what it says. What does it say in Romans 12, too? Is this saying that if he didn't come, we can do whatever we want because there is no sin. Oh, I mean, it's 2 12. I get my. I'm just left. Okay, read it. For as many as have sinned without law will also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. Okay, it, it, it's saying there whether you, 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 you know the law, if the law is there and you know the law and you violate the law, uh, you're wrong. But there are things, and he's saying there are things that are wrong, even, even outside the law, there are things, people, that they know they are, 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 are wrong. But Jesus specifically says here, they would not have sin if he did not come into the world. He doesn't say that. He doesn't like the signs of the signs. He posted the world. It says, no sin. Yeah, no sin, I can tell no, that says they would not be guilty of sin. It doesn't mean it doesn't say they wouldn't have sin or they wouldn't be sinners. They just wouldn't be guilty. They wouldn't be judged guilty of. They wouldn't be judged no. guilty of sin. You know, let me let me try, and maybe this will clarify it because you know I, I sometimes I, I phrase the question wrong and it, it causes you all confusion and you try to answer it. You know, but you know Jesus is very specific here. They would not sin. 
They would not be guilty of sin. You know, is this singular or plural? I think Jesus is talking about a specific sin. They would not have this specific sin. And what is their specific sin? They rejected Jesus. They rejected the, th the fact that he was the son of God. They rejected the things that he was teaching as being true. It would, and, and thus, in rejecting Jesus, they rejected the Father. They rejected God the Father. This is the sin that they would not have. If Jesus, if Jesus did not come into the world, if Jesus did not perform all these miracles, and Jesus had not taught them how to love one another as he loved, they could not be guilty of rejecting that because it never happened. Very. Well, verse 1 and 2 says, they would have no cloak, they wouldn't be hidden. He exposed the sin of not accepting him and not accepting God. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is one class we might finish early. Uh, but let's go ahead and finish up our reading now. Beginning in verse 26, up to 16.4. But when the Helper comes, whom I will, shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify me. And you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. These things I have spoken to you should that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God a service. All these things they will do to you because they do not know the Father or me. For these things I have told you that when the time comes you may remember them that I told them to you. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. In what way will the counselor, helper, and the disciples continue the ministry begun by Jesus? How, how do they continue? In what ways? The the spirit will testify. The spirit's going to testify to them that you know you have, you have not wasted the last three years or the time that's going on. They will continue to remind them that Jesus is who He says He is. They uh, they will testify. They're going to testify that Jesus is the Son of God. Uh, they're, and, that, and that's what they're going to preach. They're going to continue to preach salvation. They're going to. They're going to continue to preach repentance, repent of, of sin, and turn away, uh, change your life. They're going to they're they're going to continue to do this as Jesus has done. So they're going to continue Jesus' ministry. Jesus, Jesus uh, says he came into the world uh, not to condemn but to save. Well, that is what they are going to continue. There's, you know. Uh, Uh, this is just a flash that came into me because of, of what I said. Uh, and this, you know, and, and some people, when they're trying to teach Christ, they always start off on the left foot instead of on, on, on the right foot. Because the, the first thing that, that a lot of people that don't know, and John doesn't do this, John does it right as far as I know, but they, they start out immediately by condemning people by the way they're living, saying, you're, you're living wrong. You know, the things you were doing are wrong. You know, you know, so you, you don't. It's very difficult to win somebody over by immediately condemning them. 
what you need to do is to teach them about Jesus and continue to teach them about Jesus. And as they learn more about Jesus, I think eventually they're going to condemn themselves. And, and then that's when they decide, hey, uh, I need to straighten out my life and I need to follow Jesus. Also, that's that. Our responsibility is to teach the Bible. Our responsibility is to teach the Bible. You know, we're not here to, you know, and I judge. judge. We let the scripture, the words, judge itself. We don't judge people. God's word judges. Them. Yes. So we cure a program. You should start out with Isaiah 59 2. So all have sinned. All have sinned. Not condemning the individual, but notifying them that also I have sinned. <clears throat> then, you, then they have reason to seek a savior. Yeah. I, I have written down here, I don't, uh, and, and I think this is, this is brought out, you know, in, in answering this question. I had the, the, the spirit that the disciples will continue to testify of Jesus. And then, you know, and I think because Jesus told them that the world's going to reject you, they're going to hate you, and so on and so forth. And I think because Jesus told them, I think rejection by the world is going to confirm to the disciples. It's going to strengthen their faith because Jesus already told them this is going to happen. So I mean, and instead of causing them to doubt when they're rejected by the world, when people reject them, instead of causing them to doubt, it's only going to strengthen their faith. What kind of treatment can the disciples expect from those that don't know Christ? <clears throat> I think we're kind of answering this again, but we can kick it around some more. If somebody out there in the world, they don't know Christ at all, they have no religion background or whatever, how are they going to treat you being, being a Christian or, or, or expressing your faith? The way they've been treated. Well, my thought is they're going to treat you with uh, uh, I can't pronounce that word. Uh, just you know, they're they're going to doubt that you suspicion. suspicion. They're going to treat there you go. Thanks, Bill. Suspicion. They're going to treat you with suspicion that you don't know what you're talking about. What are we doing next weekend? We're going to talk about evolution. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about the world being 8,000 years old, whatever it is. Millions of years. Not, not, years not, 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 not 10 million years old, but maybe just a little over 8,000 years old. You know, if, if, you, if you believe that, people that don't believe in God uh, think you're an idiot. Yeah, and, 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 you, and you ignore the facts. Why do I keep looking at you, Larry? Well, it's not because I think you're an idiot, Larry. Millions of years. You just caught my view. You know, so you know, so that they they they, they suspected you. You know, and if you don't accept, if if you don't accept evolution and the <coughs> ten million year old theory, you know, and and, and they do accept it. They're, they're not going to accept anything else that you say. So, so suspicion and, and uh, uh, misunderstanding and so on and so forth. But Jesus goes on, and, and again, what, what kind of uh, treatment did, can the disciples expect? When they go out and teaching, and one of the things, and Jesus specifically said, says here is, they're going to be put out of the synagogue. Yeah, you know, not only, and they're going to be persecuted. Uh, and I don't know if Jesus pointed out here, but they're going to be, they they can expect to be in prison. They can expect to be put to death. These are the things. This is the treatment that the disciples are, are going to have to expect or, or do expect, and it. I 
think that's one reason why, why, why Paul, and who was in prison with Paul at the time, but, you know, when they were thrown in prison and they were chains and shackles, I think that that's why they were able to sing and pray while they were fine. Because there wasn't nothing that they didn't expect. Well, Jesus told them that. Yeah, exactly. I got one more question. We got four minutes, so uh, you got a lot of talking to do. What kind of persecution are are more most possible? Possible or most probable for us in our society. What kinds of persecution? What kind of persecution is this likely to happen to us today? Ridicule. Ridicule. Lawsuits. Yeah. Lawsuits. Yeah. Lawsuits. yeah. Firing. Firing. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> <coughs> if I, I don't know, I, I guess you could. I'm, I'm trying to think. It, it would. I think. Well, we have Christians killed because of their belief in it. I don't know if we face that in the United States. No, not in the United States. No, but other Yeah, but in, in other the countries, world. the people yeah. are put to death yeah. for their belief. Yeah. You know, uh, so that's that's a imprisonment for their belief. Imprisonment for their belief. Here in the U.S., the you know, cancel culture is big, so yeah. people end up losing their businesses. They lose their uh, their friends and family. They're ostracized uh, based upon their beliefs. You know. Uh, this lady that made cupcakes and they wanted them to to make uh, a wedding cake. Make a wedding cake. Yeah. Do you think her business suffered because of that? Sure it did. They at least lost one client. Yeah. yeah. Actually two. Two. <laughs> well, I I remember. Uh, what's the uh, uh, chicken place? Uh, Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A? Uh, I don't know, a few years ago, three or four years ago, uh, the LBGTQ you know, came out against them. In fact, even most recently, uh, there in New York, since they have a habit of closing on Sunday, they, they've always done that. You know, uh, they had people come out and say, hey, you know, you can't close on Sunday. You know, you got to do like everybody else there. You know, try to bring up. You know, uh, one, you know, an interesting fact. But when I was a kid, there it was rare that anything at all was open on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. I think I the, the, only, the only things you could get was the emergency room at the hospital. Yeah, <laughs> down south. Uh, well, grocery stores started in the late '60s, early '70s. Yeah. Yeah. but they did have hours. Yeah, you know, at least. But now, you know, and got twenty-four hours. I think an interesting point of what you're 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 bringing up is change in that direction is very slow. And in fact, you probably won't won't even notice this happening until you get up and look around and find that everything's open twenty-four hours on Sunday and everything else. You know, but yeah, when I was a kid. No, there wasn't anything. You couldn't get gas. You couldn't get yeah. gas. They might. You know, there's most people know about the, you know, some of the things like the stores being closed. And there were, uh, even when they were open, there was a lot of places that no alcohol sales. Yeah, that's Sunday, right, etc. But a lot of people don't know that there's still places back east. There's no hunting on Sunday. And you're not allowed to be hunting or fishing on Sunday. DNR will. Take it you for it because you're expected to be in church. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know that. That's an interesting fact. Well. You haven't been back east. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Oh, well, well, no. <laughs> Don't. Don't. Well, we, 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 we've managed to burn up the whole 45 minutes of uh, our, our allotted air time. And a lot of it was a lot of air. <laughs> Gary, will you close us? Our Father and our God, thank you so much for a beautiful day you've given us, another day to be able to live and, 
and to uh, teach about your son and uh, the way to uh, have salvation. I uh, pray that you will forgive us of our shortcomings. We all sin and fall short. pray that you'll be with us this morning as we continue now into worship and are able to commune with your son, Jesus Christ. We love you and thank you for your love and your grace. Through your son we ask this. Amen. 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 Amen.